it shouldn't exist. A $450 million first ever network enabled bomb. The Stormbreaker is one weapon that shouldn't exist, but has managed to change modern warfare as we know it. It is the second version of a bomb whose first version, if it went according to plan, would not have needed a sequel. But due to a scandal involving the then Principal Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Air Force for Acquisition and Management, Darlene Druyan, this wasn't the case. She deleted a vital requirement from the development of the small diameter bomb, which favored her future employer, Boeing. Until she was sent to prison, Darlene was a high-profile figure at the Air Force. She oversaw the awarding of the Pentagon's biggest contract ever, a $200 billion deal with Lockheed to build the Joint Strike Fighter, now the F-22 Raptor. So a scandal involving her was always going to be a big deal one that required about $450 million to fix in the form of an entirely new program. This program would develop a new bomb that empties Darlene's recycle bin to satisfy the deleted requirement and become the Air Force's first ever network-enabled bomb, capable of linking with satellites in space to deal with unspeakable damage to targets with the precision of a sniper bullet. This new bomb is the Stormbreaker. Recent Stormbreaker News Starting with why we're discussing the Stormbreaker today, it begins with the Air Force's unfunded priorities list that was recently sent to Congress. The unfunded priorities list is a list of requests that weren't included in the fiscal year budget, but are needed. And in this list was an interesting request for $276 million to acquire additional Stormbreaker bombs, which is in addition to the 761 Stormbreaker bombs already requested in the 2023 fiscal year budget that, on its own, amounts to over $87.5 million. And these requests are expected to keep coming as there's a need to feed the bomb in numbers to the three fighters that are expected to wield it. That is the F-15E Strike Eagle, the F-A-18 E and F Super Hornet, and the fifth generation F-35 Lightning II. The Stormbreaker has already been fielded on the F-15E since late 2020 after it passed through a series of live drops and evaluations. For the F-A-18E and F, and the F-35, however, they're still being tested to check the compatibility with the bomb. But so far, signs point that they too will field it, as the Air Force is keen to have their smartest smart bomb on their most lethal fighters. And we'll find out why this combo is a must when we see how smart bombs work and what they mean to modern warfare. How Smart Bombs Work Smart bombs pilot themselves to hit their targets dead on, which is a massive upgrade from dumb bombs, which simply fall to the ground from wherever they're dropped in hopes to hit their target, making precision almost impossible and forcing pilots to drop tens or hundreds of them at a time to take out a single target. The somewhat intelligence of smart bombs is thanks to an electronic sensor system, a built-in control system, adjustable fins, and a battery for power all of which, when combined, transforms a dropped bomb into a glider that works by its sensor system feeding its control system the relative position of the target. The control system then adjusts the fins accordingly to face the target until a boom on the target, or as close to it as possible, as smart bombs have varying degrees of precision, depending on their sensor systems. With that said, some of the most precise bombs in smart bomb history are the TV-IR guided bombs, the laser guided smart bombs, and the inertia GPS guided smart bombs. TV-IR guided bombs. TV-IR guided bombs have television, video, or infrared cameras. They usually have two operation mode options. In the first mode, it is remote controlled and steered by its pilot to the target, while in the second, it works automatically where the bomb locks onto a target picture and kamikazes to it. 
But this lock-on is far from reliable, and there was a need for a better one. Laser-guided smart bombs. Laser-guided smart bombs use a laser seeker, which is simply an array of photodiodes to lock on to targets. These photodiodes are sensitive to some preset laser frequency, the same frequency of the laser that the operator would burn onto targets. Then, in a most explosive manner, it's up to the bomb to meet this laser, which at this point is the same as the target. Inertia GPS Guided Smart Bombs The quality of laser guidance is affected by the weather, heavy clouds for instance. An inertia GPS guided smart bomb overcomes that by using an inertia guidance system to monitor the bomb's path from its launch position and a GPS receiver to determine the bomb's position in relation to the target. By combining both data, the bomb moves to ensure its path from launch position is aimed towards the target with an unshakable lock-on setup that's centered around ensuring the bomb's position in relation to the target is the same as the target making it capable of sniffing targets out wherever they may be. With about 90% accuracy, inertia GPS-guided bombs are the most lethal bombs ever produced. And one that has taken this lethality to even greater heights is none other than the Stormbreaker. The Stormbreaker Revolutionary Tri-Mode Seeker All-Weather Attack Half Bomb, Half Spy the Stormbreaker, being an upgrade of the small diameter bomb, had its purpose defined during the Air Force's operations in Kosovo in the late 1900s. Here, there was a need for a low collateral damage engagements in the densely populated Kosovo areas. There was also the need for the ability to fight through unfavorable weather conditions, make multiple target passes in a single run, and engage those targets, both stationary and mobile. It was the requirement to engage mobile targets that Darlene deleted for Boeing. With Boeing tied to the scandal, it was left to defense contractor Raytheon to address these needs, which they did impressively well in the early 2010s. And on getting awarded a $450 million contract for further engineering and development, the result would be the first smart bomb of its class to feature a revolutionary tri-mode seeker that enables the autonomous classification of targets on land or sea, in whatever weather, and from over 45 nautical miles away. It then engages these targets with a warhead packed with blast and fragmentation effects lethal enough to destroy even tanks. And aside from its lethality, the Stormbreaker can communicate with its controlling platform as well as ground controllers to give the Air Force edge computing capability. Thanks to its computer brain, network-enabled status, and a dual-band, two-way data link. This would serve as a critical advantage for the Air Force and the military as a whole particularly in a JADC-2 undertaking where sensors and data from all military services, the Air Force, Army, Marine Corps, Navy, and Space Force are all connected into a single network to ensure each service is kept up to date at all times. This capability cements the Stormbreaker's position as a half-bomb, half-spy, that's a lot more than a day one weapon, but also an enabler as a conflict unfolds. And within the Stormbreaker is a mini JADC-2 undertaking of its own, where the attributes that individually make the bomb great all work together in a fused environment. These include the Millimeter Wave Radar Seeker, Imaging Infrared Seeker, and Semi-Active Laser, teaming up to form the Tri-Mode Seeker and work with a second team of the GPS, Inertia Navigation System, and Dual Bank Data Link that provide mature targeting and information solution. This tag team setup results in the much coveted low collateral damage engagements. The bomb software is also novel, with its ability to combine sensor data from multiple sensors and with that, few target engagements based on which is more time-sensitive or efficient. And for increased efficiency, the bomb has a conveniently small diameter to enhance the number of units that a strike aircraft can wield at a time. The F-15E Strike Eagle, for instance, can use each of its seven BRU-61A suspension units to carry four Stormbreaker bombs, 
giving the aircraft a total Stormbreaker capacity of 28 units. And with the Stormbreaker being the Air Force's first purpose-built, no-drive zone enforcement weapon, the F-15E Strike Eagle might, so far, be the finest traffic controller in history. All these perks that come with the Stormbreaker have resulted in interest from foreign countries, despite the bomb's not-so-cheap unit cost of $115,000. Finland has already ordered the bomb as part of its recent F-35A Block 4 purchase for 64 F-35A aircraft. Since the F-35 is likely to field the bomb and has an impressive Stormbreaker capacity of 24 units, and this foreign interest for the Stormbreaker is only expected to grow as Raytheon Technologies has now stated that the Stormbreaker program is at a point where they can open up to build international partner capacity. And Australia wasted no time in making a foreign military sales partner request in April 2016 for 2,950 units and support equipment valued at $386 million. And as the Stormbreaker is fielded on even more aircraft, militaries that also operate these aircraft are likely to come on board. So far, the sky has proven to be the starting point for the Stormbreaker, quite literally. But there's one setback that it is yet to overcome, a mighty one in fact, because this bomb can hit every target from miles away, except one. The red subscribe button below. Only you can hit that. So help the Stormbreaker out by smashing the subscribe button now and throw in a like as a bonus. We'll wait. That would be all for this video. Thanks for watching.